Josh Frydenberg, welcome to National Wrap. Good to be with you, Patricia. The states and territories still don't have crucial details of the National Energy Guarantee. And of course, that meeting is on Friday. Will you outline those details now, including the proposed emissions target and also what offsets market participants can expect? Well, the Energy Security Board has provided significant details, a 50-page uh, working document on how the design of the National Energy Guarantee will be laid out. Uh, the Commonwealth has written a chapter which has been provided to the states about how uh, the emissions challenge will be met. It will be a 26 per cent reduction in the uh, energy sector, rep noting that the energy sector is one third of Australia's overall uh, emissions. But the National Energy Guarantee is our first chance in more than a decade, Patricia, to get the integration of energy and climate policy right and to drive prices down. What will happen on Friday? Will you walk away with a deal? Look, I'm very confident that the states and the territories, whether they are Liberal or Labor governments, recognise the importance of this meeting and a successive meeting uh, in August, which would look to finalise the design of the National Energy Guarantee. So I am confident that this Friday we will get the green light to do that further work to reach a final deal. But you need deal. to give them crucial details and they're saying they still don't have them. The ACT Queensland and Victoria are pushing for additionality. They want basically to ensure that their efforts to reduce emissions are accounted for. Will you address that? Well, they will be accounted for. And I made it very clear in the press club uh, that while I would rather the states not pursue their own renewable energy targets because it's more efficient to have a nationwide scheme, uh, I can't stop them from doing so. So what they do at the state level, bearing in mind that Queensland, Victoria um, have all got, and the ACT have all got their own state-based targets, that will be taken into account in reaching our 26% target. But will it let others off the hook? That's their concern. No, it won't let others off the hook. All other states are focused on the transition, but what we can't have is the penetration of renewables into the system without bearing in mind the impact it has for the reliability of the system. That was the problem in South Australia, and now the National Energy Guarantee puts a premium on reliability or what is called dispatchable power, regardless of the, the, the weather at any one particular time. That's going to be a big benefit to consumers. Do you have a plan B if this fails? No, this is plan A, B, C and D. Uh, this is the way forward for Australia to integrate energy and climate policy. It's the recommendation of the Independent Energy Security Board itself, a recommendation from the Finkel Review. We have listened to the experts. We're now embracing um, their recommendation and it's been declared by groups like Bloomberg Energy Finance to be elegated, elegant and innovative. There's a split in the Monash Forum, according to the Australian newspaper. That's what they're reporting tonight. Nationals' Barry O'Sullivan says the forcible acquisition of Liddell, as proposed by former Prime Minister Tony Abbott, is basically socialism. Are you happy to hear that there's a split in the Monash Forum? Well, when the idea of compulsory acquiring Liddell uh, was first put forward, the Prime Minister and I rejected it uh, because the Liberal Party is the party of smaller government and free enterprise, not one of compulsory acquiring uh, national assets like energy. So is like the Monash Forum losing its momentum? Well, or are you hoping it is? No, look, I value the views of my colleagues and if they want to get together and uh, create their own forum, then so be it. But okay, you we... say you value the views of I your do. colleagues, but you were critical of Tony Abbott the other day, and so critical that Alan Jones is quite cranky <laughs> with you, I think it's fair to say. And I'm going to quote him. That's not the he first says, time, Patricia. Oh, I'm aware of that. <laughs> he says, you told me and agreed with me on the front lawn of your house, so that's your house, Josh Frydenberg, I haven't been invited, <laughs> uh, that global warming stuff was rubbish. Did you tell him global warming was rubbish? Look, I've been on the record... Uh, well before I went into Parliament about the importance of tackling climate change. So is he lying? Well, uh, no, I'm not going to... Uh, I, I actually, you know, when it comes to Alan Jones, I am respectful of him uh, and I have known him but for a long time. what did you tell time. him? Why does he think you said this? Well, look, um, I have been on the record publicly uh, for more than a decade on the issue of climate change. Now as the Minister for the Environment, I'm hearing firsthand from our scientists and relevant organisations. Uh, they say the, the, the climate change is real. I say 
it's real. It's not a belief about it being a belief in a religious way. It's about listening to the experts and tackling it in the most cost effective way. And that is why we subscribe uh, to our Paris commitment. But that is also why we reject the Labor Party's reckless targets, which we believe will cost jobs and send power bills up. We've got to get this balance right. And we believe we've got it right. Can you get it through your party room? Because well, you've said before you have support for this, but actually you don't have support for the detail. And the detail is crucial and you know it. Well, the detail uh, is obviously important, uh, but we uh, got strong support from the party room to the National Energy Guarantee. Uh, and the concept... What's changed since then, though? And the concept that you put a premium on reliability so when wind and solar come into the system, that they're also made to account for their impacts on the reliability on the system. Uh, and at the same time, have a declining emissions intensity, which is consistent with our Paris target. The combination of those two obligations will see prices down. You see, we've got it wrong in our country over the last decade when it comes to climate and energy policy. And when the political battle lines have been drawn, the consumers have been the casualties. I want to end that. And that's why I'm working across uh, political lines, working with my colleagues to try to secure a deal on the National Energy Guarantee. Just finally on Syria, some pretty strong language today by the Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull on Russia specifically. Obviously, we've seen these airstrikes. We haven't been part of them specifically, but we have strongly supported them. What can the world do now? Because last time there were airstrikes over the same issue, the Assad regime continued with the use of these chemical weapons. Well, the Prime Minister has made it very clear we support uh, American, French and UK action on Syria. And it's just a horrible, horrible state of affairs what's happened in that country. What we want to do is now put pressure uh, on Russia and others at the United Nations to get these chemical attacks properly investigated. The Russians use their veto. I think the world can speak loudly on this issue and hopefully uh, that pressure that can be brought to bear on the Iranians, on the Russians and on the Syrians themselves can mean a better future than what we've seen in the recent past. Josh Frydenberg, thanks for joining me on National Rap. Nice to be with you.